We are back from the one week break. Since Weekly Show Magazine was on break due to a holiday, we finally are getting chapter five of Galaxius. And this was a really, really good chapter because not only are we actually getting a bit of a roadmap to an extent of what Yuri has for Nirid and Geo to do and their decision afterwards, what we end up getting, we get to a new town, we meet a new character, and we might actually get our first lead to Yuri and where he could potentially be in this one chapter. There's also some nice adventuring aspects to it, like Galaxias is being set up to be, really beautiful page shots, and the mystery of Nirad keeps growing ever deeper. But before we jump into this chapter, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell for updates on future videos. It really helps and it shows you guys enjoy the content I make here on the channel and shows you want to see more. I'm loving Galaxius. Hopefully you guys are enjoying it too. I can't wait to keep covering every, every single week for as long as I possibly can. But with that out of the way, let's jump right into this chapter. And we cut to seemingly a flashback, a vague memory of Nirid as he's narrating to himself and thinking, what is this? When I think, it moves. Is this me? I don't know anything. I can't remember anything. What's going on? Wait, tell me. Where am I? Who am I? As he stares up to a silhouette in a distance, continually getting blurrier, with dust clouds in the wind. As this person turns around, stating, You'll understand soon enough, as my name is Yuri Holst. As we cut back to the present with chapter 5 of Galaxius being titled King Killer's Message. And Geo is obviously surprised to hear Yuri seemingly talking through Nirid in order to talk to her. Her father, her biological father, is seemingly communicating to her through Nirid. As she's wondering what's going on, what in the world is happening. She clenches the bed in nervousness, stating, This feeling, that's not Nirid. This must be some kind of dragon ability. Could it really? And this is also pretty interesting because if she thinks it's the dragon ability, even though this brief image of Yuri Holst we got, he seems to be human, there might also be the possibility that he might also be able to hide his tail like Nirid and other dragon uh, folk for all we know. And this could also be a possibility based off of the lore we got about dragon folk being born. Perhaps even if your parent is a dragon folk, you might not end up being a dragon folk. As actually, I didn't even bring this up, back when we saw with the kangaroo dragon, Susie and her son, seemingly because he did not seem to have a tail or end up fighting. So that might actually be a thing and why if uh, Yuri ends up being a dragon folk, but Geo does not have any powers, it could just be that it just doesn't happen to everybody even if your parent is a dragon folk. A bit of a tangent there, but I just wanted to bring that up because that would be pretty interesting. But we can continue on. As Yuri speaking through Nirid, as I believe this is a message imprinted onto Nirid after seemingly meeting Yuri upon his awakening with zero memories, it was on the state, I don't have much time, so I'll make this brief. I have two things to tell you both. First, I'm not the one who killed the Dragon King. Second, don't do anything to involve yourselves in all this. Don't do anything, that's the role I'm giving you both. So. Yuri not only was happy that Nirid, who had no name at the time of his awakening, found his daughter Geo, but he states two things. That he did not kill the Dragon King, like we're speculating, and for all we know, this might also end up being a lie to misdirect Geo and Nirid at the very end of things in order to keep them distant from him, or he is actually innocent and was set up in some elaborate plan from some secret evil lurking in this country for all we know. So there are two different meanings. He could be telling the truth. He could be lying. And having Nirid be the one to deliver this message through potentially a imprint on him might actually end up being, for all we know, his plan to set things into motion. Or he really is speaking from a long distance through Nirid through some kind of drunk folk ability like Geo is speculating. And also not to do anything. Perhaps he's like, okay, go on adventures. You you do have my blood in you. You have the need to adventure. Just stay out of this whole Dragon King murder mystery shit. Don't follow, don't try and find me, all that. And I can see why people are, on, are kind of doing the whole Hunter Hunter comparison, which I can't believe I did not do it to begin with. Child out looking for their parent, going off on an adventure to see the wide world. Very nice, very obvious comparisons right there. But that is interesting. He doesn't want them to look into things or do anything involving the Dragon King murder in the state that he is not the murderer. So definitely pretty interesting. He then says, there's meaning in you two stay, staying alive. 
the time will come when you'll understand. Adding potentially something more, why he really wanted these two to find each other at some point. So I am incredibly curious to see what his, what his grandmaster plan potentially might end up being with the two of them meeting each other. But as it happens, the message ends and Nirid falls back asleep with Jill trying to get Yuri to talk and elaborate more. She shakes Nirid to try and get some answers. And she's not wondering, what do you mean don't do anything? I need more than that. But it's just Nirid just stating random things in his sleep, gross things as well. But we cut to a little bit later with Nirid awake as he's wondering what the heck, why would he tell us not to look for him? As Jill says, I don't know, you're the one who said it, Nirid. Can't you think of anything? But Nero goes on to describe potentially the earliest memory that he stated is being somewhere far away with him, in a place he doesn't know, just like the opening of this chapter. He was probably the one who made me like this. Maybe he did something to me back then. And that is pretty interesting. He might actually be the one that gave Nirid his amnesia, or perhaps set things into motion. Perhaps some grandmaster plan, like we stated, to, to go for... Or maybe he's just trying to do the whole Jing Freaks thing and just disencourage them from doing something only to make them want to do it more. There it states, Jill, all this stuff might be way worse than I thought. I don't know what's going to happen and I can't guarantee your safety. As he states, so, are you giving up with a pretty determined smile on his face with Jill stating instantly, not a chance. And the two of them excitedly discuss what's going to happen next as they state fully digging their heels into their adventure mindset, stating, what adventurer gives up when they're told to stop? We've got to find him and make him explain everything. As the two of them are laughing in the back, as discussing what to do next. They don't have any leads, and what are they going to do now? But Geo confidently states, that's just fine. There's only one thing we need in times like this. Friends. We need to gather comrades. Who's going to help out with something like this? It's a big world, and weren't you the one who said that it's better to have more knowledge or for things like this. Which yeah, I was speculating this pretty early on that they'll probably have to get a band of characters to help them in their journey. And later on in this chapter, we might potentially get the first person to join their group, maybe, for all we know. It's still early on in the series, but I do think having an extra person in their overall group will not only boost their fighting power, but more knowledge of the world around them and just make their survival a lot more well, plausible without having to rely purely on Nirid's strength. Geos also ends up stating that above all, there's something romantic about adventuring with friends. Who cares about the reason? As Nirid's like, so you're not really giving this any thought. I mean, she is, but she's also letting her excitement get the best of her. I mean, like, we're gonna get make friends in this adventure. It's better to have friends. It's, it'll make this adventure a lot more enjoyable and fun. As Nirid just is like, okay, whatever. Let's give it a shot. We've got our next goal as now they have to head off to the next town. As we cut to a bit later, as Polta drops off two of them towards a mountain pass as he waves them goodbye. So this is confirmed that this is not going to be their main base of operations as they travel. So we're just gonna be walking two specific distances. And it also kind of makes sense. Polta's not gonna travel around the country with these two, especially considering that his whole idea was uh, basically focused around him. So it uh, makes sense that he would go back to town. But yeah, Geo and Nirad wave goodbye to their new friend as they walk towards this little canyon. And as they turn the corner, a beautiful page of this canyon with the sun shining down on the two of them. The depth of field is great, the detail is amazing, and this is just incredibly beautiful. The artwork of this manga, especially the landscapes and backgrounds, it's so good. And I can't wait to see what other locations and areas that the mangaka ends up creating with the future of this series. Jill states that she's never seen such a huge valley before, as it, as it is pretty pretty. She states, all of this is stuff I never would have seen if I hadn't left the island. Niren states, something standing over there, pointing to the sign that says, beware of landslides, as Jill explains to him what a sign is and why it's a warning. And apparently that this valley is known as Crumcray Pass. Apparently it's called it because the cliffs here crumbles like crazy. It is kind of a pretty obvious name. But yeah, near it says, what kind of name is that? As he walks towards the edge and part of it literally just collapses under his foot. He's like, whoa, you ain't weren't kidding. As Gio says, don't walk so close to the edge. 
As the next page, she says, now let's hurry up, and, and then instantly a large chunk of rock underneath her just breaks off as she begins plumbing toward death into the valley. As she screams, I'm gonna die. Which, this is literally hilarious. And honestly, that setup for this joke was great. And I, think, and I kinda like the execution of it. Mirad just having a little piece leave from just one of his feet, and near it, and uh, Geo just warning him to be careful when the entire area around her just crumbles away as she falls to her death. With Nered also saying, and then what? Geo, then what? As she's plummeting to her death. This is hilarious. I kind of love this whole dynamic now. But Nered just releases his tail and begins running down the canyon wall as he grabs onto Geo with his tail and then grabs onto the wall to stop them from plummeting downwards. As he managed to save Geo, as she states, what do we do? We lost track of the route to the town. As then a mysterious figure shows up asking, are you two okay? It just fell, right? As then cut to a bit later, as this mysterious person with an eye patch named Reno appears. As he states, I see, it was a landslide, huh? That cliff is famous for crumbling like crazy, you know? That's the first time I've seen somebody fall and walk away unhurt, to be honest. I'm kind of freaked out right now. As Nerd says, thanks for showing us the way. Reynold goes on to say, don't sweat it, I did what anyone would. As the two of them are speculating, oh, wait, he's a dragon folk. Wonder what kind of dragon he is. As he's hearing them from behind, he says, hey, you two, don't stare at people's tails. It's rude. Good grief, what a bunch of bumpkins. As Nerd changes the subject back to the fact that they're travelers and asking if Renault is in, from the area. And he says, yeah, I was born and raised. We get an isolated panel of him not showing his face as we cut to a bit later as he leads them to the pathway straight to the town right below the canyon. As he states, that's the town, you'll get there, just follow the road. And Geo is immediately distracted by a type of grass that she saw in an encyclopedia and is marveled at the fact that it's the real thing. And it's also funny how Nerd's the one telling her, if you keep brushing ahead like that, you're gonna get yourself hurt. And the opposite is true. I love how these two literally scold each other over their decisions, even though they make the exact same dumb decisions over and over again, despite the fact that Geo is the smarter one in the group, but her excitement just has her rush long ahead, just like Nirid, except his is more so about ignorance and not knowing anything, and his curiosity is very big. But yeah, Nirid ends up stating, you're not coming? As Renault states, I can't go back. That's the rule, after all. I'm a Dragon Knight. I lost a battle and had my territory stolen from me. My family has been Dragon Knights for generations. We weren't very big as a knighthood, but there aren't many annoying disputes out here in the sticks, so we lived in peace. However, it wasn't until a few months ago when some Dragonfolk bandits showed up and wanted this land as a front for their crimes. After they beat me, I lost my land and group members, and I got chased out of town. As Gio remembers what Susie stated in the previous chapters, stating that the only requirement to become a Dragon Knight is just pure strength. Beating a Dragon Knight ends up giving you the title and their territory as well. So, yeah, that is pretty big, as well as getting their authority. As Gio's really so that's what she meant before. Nirit says, did you try to take it back? And Renault says, yeah, of course, countless times. I think I could have won. That's an interesting thing that he stated. As they're asking, what do you mean by that? As Renault continues to state, they've got a troublesome bastard. Schmidt Zachman. He is a madman a self-proclaimed scientist who works for them. He has no specific affiliation and moves between several knighthoods following his whims. He's a cruel man who will calmly trample anyone and anything to satisfy his thirst for knowledge. They say that while he was in one knighthood before, he sewed up the captain's three dogs together and then killed them. And I'm of the like mind of Geo, he's a little bit more disturbed saying, that's a horrible guy, I don't want to get anywhere near him. And as someone who owns a dog, and has a dog as a pet, and he's my best friend, it's disturbing, and I don't like this. I don't like this imagery. But Reynolds states, that's not all. The, ma the main reason he's so feared is that as a former subordinate of Yuri Holst, he's a target of the Dragon government's erasure campaign. As this shocks Gio and Nirad as they state, he's Yuri's subordinate as the chapter ends. 
So not only do we get a bit more of that message from Yuri as he's stating for the two main leads not to follow him or to look into this mystery and to just do nothing, just do whatever they want, not look into things further, we not only meet a former Dragon Knight who lost to a group of bandits, but we're getting introduced potentially a scientist, quote unquote, that was a subordinate or a follower, a friend perhaps, of Yuri Holst. Now this is obviously a rumor and perhaps this might not even be true. But the fact that he's so dangerous due to his knowledge and also the fact that he's probably got some connection and knowledge to Yuri is big. So early on in the series, and we already seemingly have a actual lead to Yuri. If Gio and Yuri can actually talk to this scientist, and if he is a follower of Yuri, perhaps they might be able to get some sort of lead or direction on where this legendary adventurer and accused murderer of the king really is. Thus giving them a pathway forward in their adventure and actually giving them some sense of direction instead of just aimlessly wandering the area. I also like that we met a former Dragon Knight and perhaps we might help him take back his town in some way. And either he will remain in his town as a Dragon Knight or something will happen where maybe he'll help and join the group in their adventure to find Yuri. That'd be very interesting. And I really do hope this guy has a pretty cool design, all things considered, part more mainly because of the eye patch. But I do really hope that we get this more people to join their group. Beginning of the chapter. Get friends, have comrades, it'll make things easier and make things more fun. Immediately shortly afterwards, we get introduced to a brand new character, who is currently out of his town due to being beaten as a dragon knight, so the pieces fall into place. The mystery with Yuri and Nirad's connection is still very vague and grows ever deeper, but I'm incredibly excited to see what happens next because he might actually be responsible for Nirad's amnesia and has some sort of plan for the two of them in the future. So I'm curious to see what's going to happen with that and whether or not them following him will just derail whatever plan he has in store for the two of them. But that's really all I got to say for this chapter so far, as I got all my thoughts out previously in the video as events played out. But what do you guys think of this chapter? How do you feel about the progression of the story so far? How do you feel about the mysteries being further deepened and also unraveled? Let me know in the comment section down below. And if you haven't already, like and subscribe, hit the notification bell for updates on future videos. It really helps and shows you guys enjoy the content I make here on the channel and shows you want to see more. Only five chapters in and this series is honestly incredibly fun to read and I am very excited to see where this leads.